At the end of my last history video, I told you about the origin of motor racing in 1867 and subsequent significant motoring events like the Paris races. I finished off by remarking how the 1898 Paris Amsterdam Paris race was the first international race as it featured drivers and marks of different nationalities as well as passing through four countries. In the year 1900, motor racing was transformed into an international competition with the Gordon Bennett Cup. James Gordon Bennett Jr., unsurprisingly, was the son of James Gordon Bennett Sr., who founded the New York Herald, which Jr. took over as publisher in 1866. As we've discussed in my first racing history video, papers back in the day would organise sporting events as a way of increasing circulation. The New York Herald was no different, and actually went a little further, as Gordon Bennett sponsored explorers. Perhaps most famously, he funded Henry Morton Stanley's trip to Africa to find David Livingston. In terms of sport, he organised the first polo and tennis matches in the United States. And to this day, although the Gordon Bennett Cup for motor racing no longer happens, there is the Gordon Bennett Cup for balloon racing, with the 2018 edition hosted in Switzerland and was won by the Polish. In 1899, while he was living in Paris, he gave a trophy to the Automobile Club de France and instructed it was to be competed for each year. Said trophy was that of a Panard, driven by the genius of progress, with Nike as his co-driver. His motivation to organise the Cup was to encourage automobile industries internationally through sport, so a similar purpose to Formula E, who encouraged manufacturers to develop better electronic-powered systems through competition. The rules of the competition were Hello, this is the rules, boss. Entrants weren't individuals racing for themselves or for a mark, but instead, drivers race for their national driving clubs. Think A1GP. Each national club would need to pay an entry fee of 3,000 francs and were limited to three cars with every driver belonging to their entrance club. Any race had to take place between the 15th of May and the 15th of August, with said race being a total distance of between 550 and 650 kilometres, 340 and 400 miles. The cars needed to be two-seaters for the drivers and the mechanic, neither of whom could weigh less than 60 kilograms, and the cars had a minimum weight of 400 kilograms. There was a further rule which still affects the aesthetics of racing today. As cars were racing as national teams, they had to be painted in national colours. This can be seen today through the liveries of Ferrari and the Mercedes F1 teams. The first Gordon Bennett Cup race, also known as the Premier Coupe Internationale, was hosted by the ACF, who entered a full quota of three drivers via a ballot. The three who were chosen were the Belgian-born René de Nif, who had a previous success in some early races, and was renowned for his gentlemanship and sportsmanship, and would also go on to become the president of the Commission Sportive Internationale, what we know as the FIA today. Ferdinand Charon, who won the Paris-Amsterdam Paris race in 1898 and the Paris-Bordeaux race in 1899. And Leonce Girardot, who finished second in the Paris-Amsterdam Paris race of 98 and in the 1899 Tour de France car version. They each drove a 5.3-litre, four-cylinder, 24-horsepower Panar, which were painted blue to represent France. The Belgian Automobile Club intended to enter a full quota of three drivers, but only entered Camille Giannazzi, the then land speed record holder, having reached a speed of 105.88 km an hour, 65.79 miles per hour, in April the previous year. The Belgian drove in a yellow painted Snog Bolide, maybe? Germany entered a 15 horsepower car built by Karl Benz, in which his son Eugen was due to drive. However, Despite being present in Paris for the start, Eugen withdrew his entry, with the reason giving that the race had been organised at too short notice. Although today German cars race in metallic silver, the original racing colour for Germany was white, which is how the Benz car was painted. The final club to enter was from the USA, with Alexander Winton and Anthony L. Riker both driving 3.7, 16-horsepower Winton-made cars. As blue had been taken by the French and white by the Germans, the Americans opted to paint their cars red. The race was to start in Paris and end in Lyon, with the original route being in as straight a line as possible to avoid drivers getting lost along the way. However, this would have made the route too short, so it was revised. From Paris, they would head southwest to Chateau d'Anne before heading southeast towards Lyon. In total, the route was 568.66 kilometers, 353.35 miles. This exact route was only agreed two days before the race started, meaning, in places, 
there was a lack of signposts and crowd control, and livestock would walk into the road. Seven entries in total, five starters, so not much of a spectacle compared to the numbers we were talking about in the Paris races. They lined up at Ville de Avre at 3.14 in the morning, for some reason, and all five set off together at the fall of the starter's flag. At the end of the first eight kilometres of Versailles, the field was separated by a minute, with Girardot leading. 30 kilometres into the race, Girardot had a three-minute lead over French teammate De Nif. Between Chart and Chateau Dun, the road was fairly straight, and unofficial timings reported the fastest driver was Sharon, who was averaging 66.1 kilometres per hour, 41.1 miles per hour. Now heading towards Orléans, Sharon hit a gutter while reportedly driving at over 80 km per hour, 50 miles per hour, which bent his rear axle. The spectators took the role of marshals by waving a green flag 30 yards in front of the gutter to warn other drivers. Arriving at Orléans, Winton retired due to a buckled wheel, and the order was Girardot, Sharon, 17 minutes behind, and Denif, a further 39 minutes behind, and Genazzi in fourth. However, leaving Orléans, Girardo swerved to avoid hitting a horse, which was in the middle of the road, and hit a stone curb, which damaged his steering and broke one of his back wheels. Sharon took the lead, as the repairs to Girardo's car took 80 minutes to fix. De Nif retired, meaning the only two Frenchmen, Sharon and Girardo, and the Belgian Genazzi were left. At Moulin, roughly two-thirds into the race, Genazzi retired, thanks to problems with his gears and damage after hitting several dogs. Unintentionally, I'm sure. Unfortunately, this wasn't the end for the dog-related tragedy. Just 12 kilometres from the finish, the leader Sharon hit a St Bernard dog while travelling at 100 kilometres per hour. The dog got wedged between the steering gear and the springs, resulting in Sharon to lose control, making him veer to the left, drive into a ditch, through a field, and narrowly avoiding some trees. Remarkably, there was very little damage as a result. However, a water pump had fallen loose, meaning that Sharon's mechanic, Fournier, had to hold it in place for the remaining 12 kilometres. Sharon arrived in Lyon with a time of 9 hours and 9 minutes, at an average speed of 62.1 km per hour, 38.6 miles per hour, to win the cup. Girardot was the only other finisher almost an hour and a half later. It was a 1-2 for the ACF, meaning they were the winners of the first Gordon Bennett Cup and the winner of the first international competition in motor racing, and would host the cup for the following year. This being said, the event was not considered to be a success due to the large gap between the two finishers the limited number of finishers, and the small number of entrants. The horseless age wrote, The race was very badly organised, that insufficient preparations had been made, and that it must be looked upon as a failure. Therefore, the next Gordon Bennett Cup race would run alongside another city-to-city -city race to make sure there were a large number of cars in the race, even if they weren't all racing for the Cup.